your boy Jay Boogie back with another video today on this fantastic, fabulous Friday. Make sure you guys like on this video, comment this video, and share this video. So let's dive into of the NBA Finals game run recap between the Boston Celtics and the Dallas Mavericks. And um, pretty much the Celtics took this game uh, and pretty much dominated this game from the start, from the stretch. Uh, you know, they did a great job of uh, out-rebounding the Mavericks in this game, uh, boxing out a lot of offensive rebounding in this game for them. And, you know, they, you know, I always said about them, a high-volume shooting, three-pointer shooting team. They made 16 threes, uh, you know, because if you can get them to shoot a lot of threes, but if they make less than, like, 13 or, or 12, if they make – Pretty much, and they make less than 12 threes in this game. They probably, maybe just a little bit, wouldn't have too much of a big lead in this game. But, excuse me, but, you know, they made more than 12 threes in this game. And, you know, it was well-deserved for them to uh, get that W. And then, of course, they interior defense was spectacular. I think this team had nine blocks in total. But half of that credit to Jalen Brown and Christopher Porzingis. And one thing I was really impressed in this game, they kept exploiting the mismatches. They didn't go, they didn't, they, they did not go away with what was working for them. Was what's the catchphrase we always go about? Whatever ain't broke, don't fix. And that pretty much was the theme in that first half because Porzingis was cooking. Splashing, 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 bro. He was splashing like <laughs> I was literally speechless. Literally, I was speechless the whole entire time in this game. Of uh, watching, watching that game, because I mean, he was just on fire. Nobody really expected what, what was he gonna do coming back from a foot injury, you know. So, but it was well, it was he was well rested. So I felt like the rhythm wasn't gonna take long for him to get into and. You know, with a big like him that can shoot, spread the floor, it it wasn't gonna take long for him to get back to a shooter rhythm. But in that game, he was, I mean, it was like the shooting gods was with him, <laughs> literally, bro. Like, but I I give him credit. I mean, he was being aggressive all around both ends of the floor, especially on offense. You know, getting the mismatches. You know what I'm saying? He was at moments where Derek Lively was guarding him. He, he drove right past him and did it and had a few dunks at the rim. So Porzingis, bro, he was spectacular in this game, um, shooting performance, you know. And then, like I said, he was a main factor on defense with the interior blocks, you know. I mean, he was he was he was all over the place, you know. So he was he was spectacular in this game. And and I also want to give a shout out to my guy on the Celtics, Jalen freaking Brown, you know. His driving ability is, is what sets him apart because of the fact that he can drive in from anywhere on, on the baseline, top of the key, on the wing, you know, I mean, on a fast break. I mean, he, in this game, man, he like I said, his, his strength is what makes his driving ability so OP, so dominant because of the fact that Jalen Brown has an aggressive mentality. So, I always said about him that when him having that dog mentality of his is is incredible. And, you know, with him already now shooting the three ball with more confidence and shooting it so efficient his entire playoffs, feeling like that was one of the biggest factors by players uh, heading to the NBA Finals with him being so efficient shooting the three-point line. So, off the catch and shoot, off the dribble. So, Jalen Brown was ever on this game, and then he had a monstrous, a freaking monstrous two posterization dunks, you know, so, and then a spectacular defensive game with three steals and three blocks. So Jalen Brown, man, he's pretty much showing why, and the whole universe, he on why he deserves to win the Easy Conference Player MVP Award, um, Easy Conference Finals MVP Award. So, I mean, like I said, man, he got the dog mentality of a great two-way player, and he pretty much just showed the full arsenal last night in game one. So, 
I mean, it was, like I said, it was just a spectacular outing between Porzingis and Jalen Brown. And then, of course, with uh, Jason Tatum, he had uh, a decent game with a double-double, 16 points, 11 rebounds, and uh, five assists. So, pretty much the whole starting five of the Celtics scored in double digits. And they pretty much, like I said, they pretty much came out right off the gate. More energy on both ends of the floor. They attacked the weak points. They kept going. With, they kept going on what was working. So they did a great job of sending Helen off screens to get the mid matches for, for Porzingis, and the rest was history for Game One for the Celtics. And then on to the Dallas Mavericks. Man, I I didn't like how they they kept <clears throat> they kept forcing themselves into bad situations on offense. Um, a lot, a lot of drive-ins could have been kickouts. Um, trying to score over three, four people, and then you already got hella momentum from the Celtics defense on the interior. So you trying to, I get you trying to draw fouls, be aggressive, but once you see all that collapse in the paint, you have to kick the ball out. So I felt like it was at times where they kept trying to. Do too much of trying to finish over a 7-3 guy that was <coughs> already having hella momentum on both ends of the floor. So I wasn't trying to poke the bear too much of giving them or giving him or them too much more momentum. So I felt like they were just a little bit too one-dimensional offense. You know, they shot pull from the three-point line. They shot, I want to say, like 26% for the three-point line. I felt like it wasn't enough split action plays. Enough, there wasn't enough down screens. Um, it was too much isolation, isolated basketball possessions in the half court. Like I said, this is a very well disciplined pick and roll team. So I felt like it wasn't too much of that, or I felt like it was. It was just sometimes it wasn't moving with a lot of purpose, and and unfortunately for them. And they did have these wide open three pointer shots. It wasn't going down. It wasn't making it. So it was unfortunate for their sake. And on defense, it was too much un unnecessary help defense. I'm not gonna over help on Derek White, and I'm not gonna over help on um on Drew Holiday. Them two guys alone, if they drive in, make it to where they gotta shoot a tough shot. But I'm not over helping and leaving. Tatum for the three, Jalen Brown for the three, or at times, I always say you got to trust a one-on-one -on -one defense possessions because what you don't want to do with them already being a high volume three-point shooting team of the Celtics, you don't want them to get easy rhythm looks. So I felt like with too many unnecessary help defense, the only help defense that they really should have been doing was Porzingis because like I said, he was, he was one of the mismatches. But I felt like in this game, it was just too much. It, it, it was just dead weight. It was lifeless a little bit at times. So, game two, I know they're going to bounce back. But give a shout-out to Luka. He was the only bright gem. Uh, you know, he did what he can do. They they brought he, he brought the team back down with an eight. And then, you know, with the two turnovers from Lively, when he got the rebound, then the turnover from Kyrie. And then everything else kept going downhill from that. So um, the only thing that I have a bone to pick with Luka in this game was pretty much his free throws. He only shot two for five. But, I mean, he, he did everything else he could do. Like I said, he had a double-double. I know he was really upset only having one assist. But, you know, like I said, within that whole offense, it was just all over the place at times. And then Kyrie was just missing shots in this game. Um, unfortunately, he kept missing a lot of threes, uh, you know, Rarely, rare turnovers, like travel calls and stuff like that on him. So, in this game, it was just, it, was, it just wasn't an improved rhythm. So, comment below who you got in game two. It's still going to be a good series regardless. So, comment who you got, got winning game two for tomorrow night. If you like this video, like, comment, share, subscribe, do whatever you got to do. I love you guys. Jay Boogie is out.